players came to play. The ones that was cold got hot. The ones that was hot got cold. The, the role players on L.A. chipped in at critical times. You mean the fourth quarter? <laughs> All 15 points for Lonnie Walker? That chip, yeah, Lonnie that, Walker. That, that, that hey, hey, Lonnie Walker, the fourth. Hey, hey, by the way, AD not, had four well, points not, in the second half, right? Yeah, like, Lonnie Walker yeah. had 15 points in the fourth. But Lonnie Walker, the fourth quarter. What we're not going to do, Jay and Max, you're yes. not going to steal my thunder. That's what you're not going to do. Why is that? Because I discovered Lonnie Walker. Oh, I okay? see. Okay, coming out of Reading, PA, six foot four, two hundred pound oh, guy. He scouted reminds him. Reminds me a lot of lot of yeah. a receiver. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and having an opportunity to see him at Miami, and then when I was talking to Pop and Company down in San Antonio, they made the decision to take him as the eighteenth pick in the first round. Then you know, in the end, we got an opportunity. So when I talked to Hammy uh, after mm -hmm. the the Hammy. first game, I said, Hey, look, <laughs> we're getting we're getting our you know what's kicked in the second half. Mm -hmm. I mean, the second game, why don't you give him an opportunity? Let's see what he type of energy level he plays with in that second mm -hmm. blowout. He did well. So then we figured, okay, let's give him some spot minutes, Jay. And then we came along last night and we said, hey, here's a kid who can help us out in a lot of different ways with high energy in the fourth quarter. LeBron signed off on it, and the rest is history. Give him an extension. Well, that was quite a thing you did there, Gee. Uh, yeah. Lakers fans are very happy. By the way, you misunderstand me about Steph, guys. I'm not saying he can't. I'm just I want to get back to Lonnie Walker. I, I, I can I, get can back I just finish on Lonnie Walker for a second before we have another four hours for you to talk about Lakers. Well, except that you Steph. brought it up before, and I was in the middle but of the But then I tried to get out of it by getting to Lonnie Walker. You got, now, Jay, go on. Go hold, with Lonnie. Hold, hold on a second. It's not that I don't think he can do it, although it's improbable, or I'm rooting against it. I just want to see it. Like, LeBron did it. It was incredible. And the Warriors are capable of doing it. It's not like they're incapable, but it will be very difficult. Now, go ahead, Jay. Tell me all about Lonnie Walker, the fourth quarter. That's his new nickname. I, I just think it's a, it's a great example for people out there to always stay ready. Because before the trade line, right after the trade deadline, like, he was out of the rotation. Like, he was not engaged defensively. His shot selection was sporadic. He had played a lot of minutes with the Spurs before, and you just think something's going to be given to you. And this dude has always stayed ready. He's been in the gym. He stayed ready, working on his game. And all of a sudden, in the moment in which they need him, in which AD was tired because of what he brought to the table defensively, in the game which LeBron was missing a lot of shots and just literally playing – and bully ball, trying to punish people to get to the rim. This dude single-handedly, if he doesn't go for 15 points in the fourth quarter, the Lakers do not win the game. They don't win the game. And we're talking about Steph's triple-double in a very different way. It's going back to Golden State 2-2 instead of the Lakers being up 3-1. The great show up thing about that, though, J2, is Darwin Ham realized and the coaching staff realized the fresh legs that this kid had. And when everybody else was tired in the fourth quarter and holding on to their – uh, the edge of their the edge of their shorts and bending over, he was fresh legs. So he can go six and nine from the field. He can knock down the free throws with no problem at all. He can play defense. You know, he can do all those sort of things because his legs is fresh. Fresh legs is a big reason. Like, you see star players when they get gassed versus bench players on fresh legs. Bench players are like the stars, and the star players become like role players. So especially a guy who's well-rested like that and, as you said, stayed ready – it's so funny that LeBron is now being, you can't say carried, but the role. No, he, he's a shell of himself. Yes. You can tell. He's, it's not, it's he's not the doing same. what he can, but as in, whereas in the past, he would drag a group kicking and screaming. Right now, he's leaning on these guys and they're coming through for him. Well, it's almost like him and AD, their possessions where they're just, I mean, you know, they're not doing anything impactful in the offensive end, whereas D'Lo, Schroeder, Austin Reeves, last night, Lonnie Walker. Austin Reeves played well last night as well. But, okay, help us create shots. Uh, put us in positions to score. And when LeBron picks his spots, it's just, okay, I got stuff on me. I'm going to bully ball him down on the block. I'm going to punish people down low. Like, that's what the offense is. You know what, Jay? See, I don't think he's a shell of himself. I think he's a smart enough, savvy enough 30-year-old, 40-year-old veteran. I'm going to call him 40. 40-year-old yeah, 40 40. veteran that knows, like you said, picking spots. He knows they're smaller than me. There's nothing they can do. Why do I? Why would I take a bad shot when I can just go down there with my big old shoulders and power through Steph? He bouncing and Steph, every time he bouncing to Steph, Steph go two feet. Bouncing to him again, two feet. Before you know it, as you know, as a defensive player, you look up, you're underneath the rim. It's too late at that point. 
Yeah, I, a show of himself wasn't a negative comment. Oh, I didn't it's say just, it was, no, I didn't say. I mean, it, it, the standard just, he set. Yeah, yeah, the standard that LeBron yeah. James has is it's a different type of game. But Key, I will say this though. Even though AD didn't have a prolific fourth quarter, like you know, I, we talked about there's multiple ways you can guard a pick and roll. Now mm -hmm. it's apparent that the volume of pick and roll that Golden State is running is way higher. Hence the reason why you see. Clay Thompson struggle or Jordan Poole last night have a donut, right? Because now you move away from the continuity in offense and they become stagnant. They become more spot up shooters, right? Which allows people to stay glued to them. You can stay home on those guys because there's not as much movement off the ball. Now, Steve Kerr did start Gary Payton a second last night. You saw him involved in a lot more ball screens because he can pick apart, make plays happen. But you saw Steph, a high doses of Steph with the ball in his hand. So the way you guard pick and roll is, number one, you can have drop coverage, what you talked about. Number two, you can blitz the pick and roll. Or number three, you can switch it. The last possession of the game, or like the possession before last, AD switched the pick and roll. He did one hell of a job guarding Steph on an island. Got him to settle for a one-legged step-back jumper in which he missed. Now, that switch allowed Draymond Green to get the rebound. And then he guarded him so well that he allowed Steph to take a shot like five and a half, six feet away from the three-point line contested. Look at him. With the arm out, it's con that's a hell of a defensive presence to get Steph to settle for that. And you probably don't win the game unless AD has the ability to guard Steph on the island you, two possessions in a row. You go for it in game five. You try to, all right, now we're going to be up 3-1. Now we're in a commanding lead of this series, and we have three more games to get one. Now, I, I don't think this series is over. Um, I think it's going to take one hell of a knockout punch to knock out the defending champions, especially when they're going back home. And th think about it. I mean, Steph was, overall, he was, Steph was 12, 12 of 30, 3 of 14 from the three-point line. Steph goes 5 of 14. It's a different game. Like, so they're still right there, even with Jordan Poole having a donut, even with Klay Thompson going 3 of 11 from the field. So uh, it's still going to be a series, but they, I, I, what, a, what a junkyard, backyard mentality for the Lakers to win this game. Well, they, I mean, they the shot Lake under 30% from the three point line again, Max, which goes back to that point. It's not like they're shooting the ball well, they're finding a way to win the game in the trenches, they, man. They, and, and the Lakers stole one on the road and then defended home court. Now, <laughs> Golden State's going to have to defend home court or the thing is over in the next two games. And to consider where I understand key your point. Next two games, you mean next game? Well, I'm saying they're going to have to they're going to have to defend both games at home or the series is over. Oh, no, you're right. Next game. Yeah, yeah. Next game. Yeah, one, one, one. one, one, one. Yeah, one, one, one. It ain't going to be no. Yeah, yeah, one, one, yeah, one, one, one. We can handle our LA. business on Wednesday. It's even, which is even worse for them, right? They're going to have to defend home, win on the road. The whole They have to win out. What? What's their, what did they, so they've dropped every game on the road except one, huh? The one they got in Sacramento, everything else they dropped on the road. Which stays yeah. in line with the season. This yeah. is what they've been doing all season. Well, they got, Why are they so bad on, on the road? It's a great question. Usually, the veteran teams are, you know, that's what that comes last, learning to win on the road, but they should know how to do that, right? I mean, look, at the end of the day, like, they're, they're still, <laughs> they were right there. They were right there. Yep. So, back to back games now, which LeBron and AD have played over 40 minutes, you have to assume that in game five, they're going to play less minutes, right? So, I mean, there's going to be an advantage for Golden State in that game, especially the Temple. They're going to be pissed off that they lost two in a row. So, you would think it's probably going to come back to L.A., and that's going to be come that defining moment. Because if you get to game six, I mean, Jay, you can't get that and get it, at home. Fact check. They they lost two on the road. They won two on the road, you're I mean, saying. They won two on the road. They won, they won, won two in Sacramento. Right, yeah. Yeah, they, they won, won two, two in Sacramento. Sacramento. Fact check. Well, listen, as Key has been pointing out, the Lakers are not are a fake bottom seed. They are really much more like a top three or four seed in the conference post trade deadline. So this is not a shock or anything, but it's a tough series between two of the top, say four teams in the Western. So conference. the thing about heat, were in a fight with the bulls for the play in spot, lose to Atlanta, end up being the eighth seed, 
beat the number one seed. Now they're one game away from the conference finals. And then the Lakers are a team that started 2-10, and 10, and they were 13th at the All-Star break. And now they're one game away from the conference finals. That's a, where we are. It's been a crazy postseason. Get a chance to Google Lonnie Walker's name and understand his background, where he came from, and you will root for this man to succeed. Like, there are certain stories in sports key um, that sometimes they reveal themselves and it can make people uncomfortable. But when you hear about what Lonnie Walker went through as a young child and what he was able to accomplish by getting drafted to the Spurs and how he's always stayed ready and continued to work through challenges and adversity with the Lakers for this to happen in one of the most iconic moments in basketball history for the Lakers to win game four, it just it, it makes me so happy knowing him as a young person. Came up huge. So, so what went wrong for the Warriors other than Lonnie Walker the fourth? Steve Kerr has a theory. The question is, is he right about it? Jay Key, here is Steve Kerr, who refused to blame the officials after the game four loss at the post game presser. So I thought the fourth was about uh, it was about Walker, and it was about I think we had three or four illegal screens um, called, and um, that was disappointing. I didn't get a look at at uh, the replay on any of them, but. Um, you know, the, there were a couple that were very disappointing just live. Um, but, you know, the Lakers are, uh, you know, they're a team that, that plays with a lot of gamesmanship. They understand, um, you know, how to how to generate some calls. I thought they took some flops and, and um, were rewarded. But I'll have to see the, uh, uh, the replays. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe those were all illegal screens, but uh, didn't feel like it watching it live. Okay, yeah, I, so, yeah. <laughs> I understand now what he means by the illegal screens. I wasn't sure before. I thought he was talking about the Lakers wasn't called for illegal screens. Those screens that the Warriors was set, man, them dude, man, they knocked the dude down, hit him right in the jaw. And then the Draymond went on the on the edge, Jay there. I mean, you couldn't really get a good, clean shot at it. It looked like he chicken-normed him a little bit, and he wind up, well, Lonnie Walker wind up falling down on the baseline, I mean, on the uh, out-of-bounds line over there. But, hey, man, it is what it is. I mean, and look, you you can sit there. I mean, and I, I think Steve Kerr would agree to this. You you can always recall moments within the game where you had wished certain calls weren't made, but it's not like Golden State still didn't have a legit chance to win the game. Like yeah. they, they had a chance to win the game. So but Clay Clay put that thing out there on that dude, man. You can't do that. That's what I'm saying. I, I gotta say something about this. You guys are not gonna like it. Tough. Steph Curry, I saw a stat about this after the game. Has had so so has had 14 shots in the playoffs in his career to take the lead in the fourth quarter or overtime with under 50 seconds left. Okay, so two shot clocks left. Has never hit one. And I, I know I understand it's Steph Curry, so there's a hand in his face. You mentioned the job the AD did on him, right? Very like who hits that shot? Well, a lot of times, the answer is Steph Curry. He's hit a lot of those kind of shots in his career. And if, he, if that goes in, maybe they win the game, right? That ties the game. He didn't hit it. Like he's go, if, if the Warriors are to come back on the Lakers, as the Lakers once did to the Warriors, or excuse me, as LeBron once did to the Warriors in 2016 when he was with the Cavs, Steph's going to have to hit those super difficult shots. Someday, you're not always going to get a high percentage shot. The game will be on the line. Got to hit him. Got to go down sometimes. No. What are we talking about here? Don't they have to go down in those moments sometimes? I mean, I, okay. I, I just, I mean, Steph dropped 50 in games. Like, he's he's single. Like, the only problem I have with that comment, Max, on this particular situation is that the entire offense, due to the volume in which they're running pick and rolls, is centered on just Steph. Sure. Steph. I mean, he had a triple-double last night. So, he's he generated so many points off those assists that when you go to a high volume pick and roll, Clay just becomes a spot up shooter. Like there's no movement for Clay. Same I think with it's a Jordan Poole, That's why who had shots. zero points. <laughs> yeah. So But what I mean is I'm not doubting his greatness in all other circumstances or how much he has to do or why the percentage may go down for him under those clutch situations. I am saying, however, that clutch moments do exist 
I believe clutch ability exists. And even if it doesn't, in the end, we look at how many times you've been in that situation and how many times you've come through. Whether or not that's repeatable ability or you just got unlucky, that's what history will record, whether or not you hit those shots. He's got to hit those if the Warriors want to come back. Uh, Jay, as, as, having been two-time college player of the year and an NBA point guard, how many point guards have you ever seen seven feet tall? Never. Okay. So, when you have, and this is only from a defensive standpoint, when you have, a, let's just say he's a guard. When like you have AD? a seven-foot guard in AD guarding a 6'2 guard, how difficult is it to get a shot up? Look, he, I, I had a hard time against guys like, let's say, Steve Jackson, right? Mm -hmm. Guys who are 6'7", 6'7", 6'8", because what they, they play off you, so... They can contest you. You saw AD, his wingspan, like on, a, on that possession, he just had his hand out, right? So yeah. as you're moving, it's just – it's a difficult target because you're trying to create separation. Like, that's why – I that's the first thing I said. Like, I give AD so much credit on that possession. One, it's a one-legged stepper that he got a hand up on. And then mm -hmm. the second possession, look at his feet. Like, that, that's a dude who's seven feet on the perimeter – Guarding Steph, yeah. who's a wizard. Steph is top two in the NBA with a handle. Are you suggesting that out on the perimeter, AD guarding Steph is an advantage for AD, the defender? That's what you seem to be suggesting, Key. That's exactly what it was. Okay. It was an advantage. So it's, so it's an advantage. Because when, he's not so only tall, he's wide, believe it or he not. He did a great job. I think that's a great point, Jay. But you would think, strategically, that's actually an advantage for Steph, well, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, you're making it sound against, like it's an advantage against, for AD. No, AD against, did a better against, job on defense than against, Steph did on offense. But, against but, dump trucks, but, but, in this situation, he's not a dump truck. But, he, but, remember, hold on a he second. played guard before. I get it. But, so but, but if you what, have, what happens from somebody who's been guarded by guys at tall, Max, yeah. they can push up on you, right? And when you're forced to try to get around them, that's a seven-footer on your back. So that, yes. that it, it, it – it, ultimately adjust shots at the rim because that's a dude that can block your shot from behind and they're funneling you into guys like Braun. 100%. I understand what you're saying. It makes perfect sense to me. What I'm saying is he's seeming to suggest that that's an advantage for AD. What I'm saying is there are certain strategic advantages to having a live kind of excellent defender who can move his feet on the perimeter guarding a player like Steph. But there are also disadvantages. And generally, you would say the disadvantages outweigh the advantages like you have won if you've got a guy like AD out on the perimeter on Steph. You, the offense has won that strategic battle. Now, AD won the actual matchup battle. Tip your cap to him. But that's an issue of a great defender in a great moment doing better on defense than the offensive player did on offense. And, and on consecutive explain, possessions. Yes, the but, man but just also, explained to you how difficult it is for a smaller guard going up against a bigger – I'll call him a guard in that situation because he's guarding him uh, – a, a bigger guard opponent because he can not only get you from the front, he also can get I you know, and block you from the backside advantages. and funnel you to another 6'9 guy that's extremely big yeah. And strong and all the other things. If you remember in the game, if you watch the game, you remember that Steph blew past uh, LeBron. And guess what LeBron did? LeBron let him go by, chased him from behind, pinned it against the backboard. Yes, it pays to be tall in basketball. I'm not denying that. I, I got something to say when we come back from break. It's about Steph, but it's different. I got something to say about Steph. The jump ball situation, Key, you know, after they get Draymond Green makes a turnover, AD gets the ball in the corner. They trap him. It's a jump ball. They go do the jump ball. When Steph catches the ball, like, there's not a lot for me to be critical as it relates to Steph on because I think he had a phenomenal game, a beyond phenomenal game. Mm -hmm. But there are little things that when you watch tape, when he caught that jump ball, that little careless turnover where he just pops it over his head, you're thinking about understanding time and situation. They still had a timeout left. Right? So if you look on the side clock, there's Lakers have a timeout, Golden State has a timeout. And that's one of those things where you wish catching that ball, falling down, timeout, timeout. You still would have had one more possession with 3.6 seconds left to go in the game. They give up the possession. That ends up being the game. But it's like those little. Nobody's perfect. Nobody, yeah, yeah. nobody's saying anything. Yeah, like, you're allowed to analyze the game here, right? That, that's the oh, situation yeah, in the game. Yeah, I, I thought two things, Jay, right? I didn't really understand why he didn't call timeout. 
I just I didn't know if they had a timeout or not. I was like, damn, he didn't call a timeout. I wonder why. Because typically, just like you said, you would go down, you boom, timeout, because you know. But I think he thought somebody was in the cor- you know, in the corner of behind course. him. Well, it's the same so way. he was just trying to slide that ball over similar to what Draymond did early in the game. Remember when Draymond dribbled up the court and he just passed the ball to Darwin Ham? Yeah. Out of nowhere because he thought, remember that? Yes. I know you saw it. He thought Gary Payton, I don't know if to call him Junior, the third, the second. The second, the second. The second. GP, the second, was is supposed to be in the corner, but he ran off the court. So he's automatically thinking that somebody's supposed to be over there. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why he didn't call timeout. Maybe it's just a situation where he panicked, man. And it's okay for great a great player like that to panic. Yeah, it happens. I mean, look, the, the Draymond play, literally the possession before where he fakes the ball, the the ball, um, the the ball drop off, right? Like a fake handoff, and he's trying to hit Clay in the corner. Like he leaves his feet. Like there are little yeah. things that you do. Like you're not supposed to leave your feet for a pass, but you know what he's trying to do. But he panicked, and, and he looked like, like he panicked. Is, it, right to is it panic or is it? I always feel like one of the things that the Warriors do well is play loose right like in the third quarter when all of a sudden the threes are raining down and the roof caves in on you you're like damn I thought we were in this game and the Warriors win by 25 you can tell they, by you can tell by body language that somebody panicked man okay but I noticed in play like I, there have been times I think of Curry with the behind the back pass in 16 I think of moments like that where like man that's oddly casual for a moment like this you're saying that that was panic and not it, it felt when like you in, when you in the air like Jay was saying you underneath the basket you in the air you leave your feet you gotta know where you are going. taught well, not he does to- well he does know where he's going the problem like if you look on the opposite side of the court it was a flare screen so you had Andrew Wiggins that was setting a back screen on LeBron James, okay. right? And Andrew Wiggins was being guarded by Anthony Davis. Now, I talked about the DHO dribble handoff, right? He fakes the DHO mm-hmm. and Draymond Green. He goes towards the side, underneath the back, but he's looking for the kickout pass to the corner to Clay off that flare screen, but they just switched, right? But you, you, should, you can't leave your feet for a pass like that. Draymond Green leaves his feet. And that, you're not going to have any momentum to even be able to throw the ball when you leave your feet. So you think it's panic in those situations? I call it I call it panic. I understand what Jay is saying. I call it panic. That's just the vocabulary of the word that I choose. Doesn't mean doesn't necessarily mean he was spooked, he was scared. It's just like, oh my God, what am I gonna do with the ball right now? I'm just gonna throw it to Wiggins because he's right there and I'm really supposed to give it to Clay, but they done switched on me. I thought it was one thing when I left my feet, it came back down. It was something totally different. But the pass by Steph, when you watch it on slow-mo. Like and look once again, we're just we're analyzing specific moments. Yeah. So I I want to preface this because without Steph Curry's prolific game type energy, they're not even in the game. But that last play off the jump ball, he flicks the ball over his head, but doesn't even survey who's back there. Now I that's once again you're reacting in the game, but like that those are little things where it's like all right off the jump ball if we don't have call a quick timeout. Timeout, timeout, timeout. Like, you can roll around the ground, timeout to try to extend it to get Unless you don't possession. know you have a timeout. I mean, those things are typically communicated to you. I didn't right? know if they had a timeout or not. I was hoping they didn't, but Jay said they did. So, if they had a timeout, I think when he did that, Jay, he felt like somebody was going to be in that. You could just tell because oh, he didn't. Yeah. You know, he just was like, okay, I got somebody behind me to pull that three. Because that's probably, I, I mean, you tell me from a jump ball standpoint, there's position. People are in certain positions, in certain spaces on the floor, and he probably anticipated somebody being behind. Sure, him. looks like he thought someone was going to be there. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.